My name is Uli Sacco from Abervision, and welcome to Bavaria Beach Sandcastle Contest. <laughs> My name is Camille, and this is Nicole. Nicole, what do you think about all the beautiful sandcastles today? I think the sandcastles are great. This is my first time at Revere Beach, and they're much bigger than I thought they were going to be. I think they all look fabulous. What do you think? Me too. They're beautiful, <laughs> fabulous. Hello, I'm Nick Anthony Russo. I'm speaking here with the, the Sandcastle director. Uh, what do what you do here? How does this thing take place every year? This is amazing. These are the best sand sculptors in the world, and they come here from all over the world. They've competed um, internationally. We have the world champion. Many of the people who are here have been here several years. This is our fifth year, and it's run by a nonprofit organization called the Revere Beach Partnership that works with the city of Revere and the state, especially the Department of Conservation and Recreation, and we get donations and sponsors to put this event together every year. I'm Christine Madaga from Mabel Vision. What's your name? I'm Lily Guido from the Revere Beach Partnership. So what are you doing here today? Today we are here on our uh, second day of competition at the New England Sand Sculpting Festival, the largest festival on the East Coast that we hold every year on Revere Beach. How many years you been doing this? We've been doing we've been doing this for five years. How did you get interested in doing this? I started out as a volunteer uh, four years ago, and then two years ago I became the executive director of the Revere Beach Partnership. So now it's my job, but it's the most fun job anybody could ever ask for. The best thing about my job is I get to be out here in the beautiful sunshine on the gorgeous Revere Beach every day. How many hours of sculpting today? We have 11 professional sculptors competing, and we have six or seven more in the demolition site that are working on that beautiful piece in the middle. What did you do this week? I actually work for Celebrity Marketing. We're doing all the logistics of the scene, um, and we, um, we were able to get the sponsors to come out here and help support the event, so we're doing... Um, all different sorts of jobs this week. It's really exciting, keeping it refreshing. I really love just watching the whole thing transform. It's really something that I've never seen before, and it's it just breathtaking. It's nice to see such talented and passionate people at the beach. Now, interesting, uh, why do they truck uh, sand from New Hampshire? Do... It's a very interesting question. You'd think that every beach has sand, but some sands are better than others, and this sand just has a lot of shells and, and rocks and things, so um, the sand that they bring in is actually just a really good carving sand and it helps uh, reclaim the beach. We pack the sand, we get the sand wet, pack it together really hard and then we carve it out with those tools. Does this sand go back to New Hampshire when you're done with it or do we keep it? You guys get to keep it and when we're done they'll just, they'll just uh, after they keep these up for a while, they'll just level them all and use it as part of the beach. I see. How long, what's the average uh, lifespan? Well, I would say you could probably keep these up for a couple weeks without too much damage. The sculpture I'm working on, you can only see the top because we've just started carving, but what it looks like is some flames, and it's going to be kind of a tribute to, to the Olympics. It's going to be an Olympic flame with a couple athletes, uh, making it up as I go. So what was the hardest thing you ever sculpted? Wow, the you know the hardest thing for me to sculpt is uh, is a likeness of someone who's famous because everybody knows what they look like and, and they, they know when you're getting it wrong. Oh, how true. What is the easiest? Oh, a pile of sand. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, this is Jimmy right here on beautiful Revere Beach, the oldest beach in America, the first public beach in America. And I'm with Matthew Martelli, Mike Shamali, and Matthew Shamali. So you're all brothers. Yeah, well, the two of us are. Two I'm of the missing brother. <laughs> <laughs> What's the average length uh, does it take to do one of these things? Well, they give us four days. 
How many hours a day do you work? They give us uh, actually seven hours. It goes from eight o'clock to four o'clock, but they give us an hour for lunch. Hello, I'm Chris Alfonso from AvaVision, and I'm here with Sandy. So Sandy, how do you become part of this part of this contest? How I became part of this contest? Well, I've been here for four years now. Actually, I was here from the very first contest, and um, here at Revere, it's wonderful. How did you get into sculpting? Well, Chris, I started sculpting 13 years ago because I was bored at the beach. And I'm looking at people at the beach there, and some people were building sandcastles, and I watched them, and I got so excited, and I went into a contest one second, got 50 bucks, a sandcastle trophy, and I've been hooked ever since. So that's how I got started. Wow, unbelievable. How did you get interested in doing this? Well, I first started, um, started doing sand sculpture after a good friend of mine signed me up for a competition on the beach. It was a really a long competition and I learned a lot. And then I decided I would want to do more sand sculptures. Right now I'm working on a sculpture with uh, the moon and stars. And we're going to make two people catching a falling star so they can make a wish. What's your favorite part of this event? You could make so many beautiful things out of the sand. With all these, fr all these friends of mine, get to know a lot of people on the beach, so it's nice. This is Nicky Rusloa, and I'm speaking to a guy, the head man named Sean, who is the head hunter of this thing. Sean, how this thing got all started? Uh, basically, five years ago, we were commissioned to do one 10 ton sculpture. Uh, if you look behind us, there's one 10 ton sculpture behind you, and there's actually 11 of them this year. So, uh, yeah, we started last year with one. I mean, five years ago with one, one sculpture. How you get all this together? Uh, basically, we send out invitations to all the sculptors if they're available uh, to come to our event. And um, we put on a really nice show for them. We, uh, we cover their, their hotel rooms, and their airfare, and we give them a, a good stipend to come in. And uh, we just have a great time. It's kind of like being with family, family and friends, you know, once oh, a year. I see. Well, Sean, where are you, what you're working on anyway? Um, I'm working on completing the 250-ton uh, demonstration site, which uh, includes uh, heroes from comic books and heroes from real life. So we have a bunch of comic book heroes on one side, we have uh, a bunch of real-world heroes like doctors, teachers, um, you know, military personnel, firefighters, police officers, lifeguards. So we want to kind of give that duality, and we have a giant centerpiece globe in the middle. Do you you think um, you're going to come in first place by Saturday night? <laughs> I think everybody here wishes they could come in first place. All that we can do though, I gotta say, all I can do is do my best and just, you know, you roll the dice and see what happens. Goodbye, everybody.